Okay. And one more student. So, you may have noticed that it has started snowing. Um, that happens every winter in these parts. So, snow has a lot of effect on traffic and transportation. Okay? It affects demand. So, how does snow affect demand? <coughs> Okay, so, yes, snow is going to reduce the amount of travel demand that people who can avoid making trips that day will avoid making trips that day. So if it's snowing, you'll say, oh, I don't need to go shopping today. I can put it off till tomorrow, or I don't, I don't need to do this. I can put it off tomorrow. Um, and there's still people out there who have to make trips. So if you work and you have to show up at your job, you'll still travel. If you're already out when it starts snowing, you probably want to get back. Um, so snow will typically reduce demand. We talked at the beginning of the course about travel demand models, so the four-step transportation planning model. So what are the four steps in the four-step transportation planning model? Make an excellent final exam question. What's the first thing that you want to do in a transportation planning model? What do you want to predict? Trip generation, good. So you want to predict how many trips there are going to be. Then what do you want to know? Okay, so you want to predict where they are going to go. So trip destination choice. Okay, so you have some number of trips are coming out of a zone, or some an individual is making a certain number of trips. How many trips are they making? Where are they going? Then what do we want to know? So we want to know the mode. What's the fourth thing we want to know? And we want to know the route. Okay? So demand is going to affect primarily which of these things? So if we have snow, what are people going to do first? We said they wouldn't make as many trips. So it's going to reduce the trip generation. Okay. For trips where you have a choice of destinations, if you have to make a trip, because let's say you need milk because you have a child and the child you've run out of milk, you still have to make the trip. But you might go to a place that's closer that you normally wouldn't shop at, okay, the local convenience store instead of the larger store that's farther away. That's affecting your destination choice. Okay. You might say, oh, I don't need to drive. I'll take the bus and let somebody else do the driving. The bus is less likely to slip on the road than my car. You might switch modes. And you'll say, oh, I'll take the freeway instead of the local streets because the freeway is more likely to be plowed than the local streets are. So it might affect your routes. It's going to affect all of those things. Okay. Um, some of you might want extra credit. If you want to build a travel demand model for the Twin Cities, which somehow relates demand to snow coverage, okay, talk to me and we might be able to do some sort of extra credit project. Okay. What we found is that on snowy days, demand is off, depends by time of day, but off between 6% and 9%. Okay. And crashes are up. Okay, so snow has a safety impact. Okay. Um, others have found um, other effects associated with weather, but there really isn't a lot of data on this. Okay. Um, study looking dot Dotlan Sharma. Commuter roads experienced the lowest reduction in traffic volume due to cold, 14%. Recreational routes, okay, so um, routes that are a long distance to the cabin and things like that, experience a greater reduction. And this is mostly associated with temperature rather than um, 
uh, precipitation, but there was also reductions associated with precipitation. So what's the effect of snow on traffic safety? Okay, so people drive slower, hoping to avoid fatal crashes. Okay, so it's going to affect travel speed. We'll talk about that later. But what else happens? Okay, so road conditions are worse. So although people compensate by sl driving slower, they don't compensate enough overall. Okay, so the road conditions are essentially much more slippery. Okay. Um, the peak period will get longer. Yes. That yes, people. We'll get to that in a moment. But yes, that's a that's a an important observation. Is that if you have the same amount of people who want to use the road, but they are all giving a greater space to the car in front of them, fewer cars can get through in a given time. The maximum flow, the capacity is reduced. And so if you had previously 1,800 vehicles per hour that could get past a point, and that's with a two-second headway, but people extend it to a three-second headway in response to their perceived safety problems, then you can only get 1,200 vehicles per hour past a point. If 1,800 vehicles still want to use the road, instead of being able to get through in an hour, now they get through in an hour and a half. The peak is longer. Okay, so generally, safety is is worse. The number of the rate of snow event injury crashes is um, per million vehicle kilometers is 2.86, in contrast with non-snow event injury crashes, which is 0.24. So it's about 10 times as many crashes. Okay. Um, Depends on, of course, the set of data that you're looking at. Okay, another estimate was 20 times as many crashes, so 10 to 20 times as many crashes. Now we talked about people um, give greater spacing. They give greater spacing because, well, what's happening? Physics of this, and this is something you talk about in your highway engineering course. If you take a highway engineering course, 4201. Okay, so imagine you've got a vehicle that's going uphill, this is not to scale, that would be a much steeper grade than you'd actually see in very many places. Um, what are the forces that are keeping it on the road? Well, the car is trying to move forward, and it's facing rolling resistance from the roadway. Okay. Now, the rolling resistance um, is associated with, okay, associated with the coefficient of friction, and then, of course, there's air resistance but there's some motive force that's pushing it forward, and there's rolling resistance against the back wheel, and there's forces moving it forward there, and there's a grade associated with this. Okay, So the coefficient of friction affects the force that's required to move forward, Okay, but sort of in the, if you want to stop, it also affects the force that's required to stop and the, the distance in which you stop. Okay. So the friction on the roads is worse. It is less friction on the roads. Okay, so if you're trying to move fast, friction is a problem. If you're trying to stop, friction is your friend. All right. We have equations for braking distance. So how long is it going to take a vehicle to brake? So you have an initial speed, the end speed. So if you're trying to st come to a stop, the end speed is zero. And you have the accelerate force of accelerate the acceleration that you're trying to overcome, and that acceleration is associated with gravity and the friction factor and the grade. Okay, so we can approximate this as the braking distance is equal to the difference in velocity from the, what you're going at before you try apply the brakes and after you apply the brakes divided by 2g times friction factor plus or minus gravity, depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill. So plus or minus the grade, whether you're going uphill or downhill. Okay. Well, you 
we can use this to solve problems. So you're going 88 kilometers an hour, 55 miles an hour, and you want to skid to a stop on a 3% downgrade where you have a wet pavement surface giving you a coefficient of friction of 0 0.3. How far you go before coming to a stop? So you're slamming on the brakes because you're coming to a stop. Your initial speed is 88 kilometers an hour. We convert that to um, 3,600 30, seconds in an hour and 1,000 um, meters per kilometer. And our end speed is zero and to 9.81 meters per second squared. Our grade of 3% um, and our coefficient of friction of 0 0.3. Well, it's going to take you 112 meters to come to a stop. Okay? If the friction were greater, you would come to a stop in a shorter distance. If the friction were less, it would take you longer. Okay? So snow is, ice is reducing the amount of friction on the roadway. Snow may be increasing the amount of friction on the roadway, depending on what kind of snow it is. But generally, your work conditions are getting worse. So. The coefficient of friction is zero, and your grade is zero. How long does it take a moving vehicle to stop? An infinite amount of time, okay? Because this is zero and this is zero. Then we have 9.8 times zero, and this distance, this velocity won't change. Okay, so the braking distance would be inf infinity. So it's affecting safety, okay? And because it's affecting safety, drivers respond by giving up more space, okay? They'll, they have a larger gap between the vehicle, or headway between the vehicle in front of them and themselves. So what's the effect on capacity? So the capacity diminishes. Okay, so if we're going from a two-second following time, which is a bit conservative on freeways, vehicles are following at less than two seconds, so they're not using the two-second rule that you learn at driver's ed, but if they increase to a three-second following time, the capacity drops from 1,800 vehicles an hour to 1,200 vehicles per hour. Okay, so on our QK curve, what's happening? Okay, we have... The initial QK curve, when we have no snow and we have some capacity of 1,800 here, when there's snow, the capacity drops to 1,200. Okay. We might reduce the speed as well. There's no, you don't necessarily have to reduce speed, but you probably reduce speed as well. So the graph will look like this with, no, with snow. Okay. And we can see what's likely to happen if your demand is greater than your capacity with snow. What's the logical outcome if, you're, if you have a demand of under 1,800 but more than 1,200 and you reduce the capacity of 1,200? Okay, so you, you said it first, which is you're going to have a longer peak period because there'll be more queuing. Okay, what typically happens, what, imagine what happens when it starts snowing. Okay, if you have 1,800 vehicles per hour going down a roadway, following at two seconds, and they increase their following distance to three seconds, and the capacity is reduced. The capacity is thus reduced. What happens when it starts snowing? You get a lot of shock waves, and then possibly you get crashes. If three seconds might not be enough of a following distance, so, so you're going. To, it takes you 118 meters to slow to, to come to a complete stop. Okay from your original speed of 55 miles an hour with a coefficient of friction of 3, okay, if the coefficient of friction had previously been higher and you don't decelerate enough or open up enough of a gap in the vehicle in front of you, when the vehicle in front of you stops and you stop at 118 meters, well, that 118 meters might be intersecting the vehicle in front of you. Okay, so there's the, the risk of a collision associated with that. Well, even if you don't collide, you slammed on the brakes. You slam on the brakes, then the car behind you slams on their brakes, and you get the shockwave, you get the tail lights, the red tail lights going down in series. And so the transition from no snow to snow is especially dangerous because the shockwaves lead to um, 
more crashes because people are having to react quickly when they're not anticipating it. Okay? And you say, well, the transition from no snow to snow, that happens in the middle of the night, then people wake up, it's snowing, they're already geared to that, and you don't have as much of a shockwave problem, you just have everybody driving slowly. But if it starts snowing in the middle of rush hour, you have this transition, and that transition time is especially bad. Okay? And what happens to speed? Okay, so he said speed slows down. Okay, people are responding to the extra risk, and they're internalizing that, and they are slowing down because they want to, they're willing to tolerate some safety risk. They're willing to say, okay, I'm not going to drive one mile per hour so that I don't collide. I'll drive lower than I otherwise would. So they're compensating to some extent, but they may or may not be fully compensating because they may not know how much they should have slowed down. Okay, so this is a safety issue. Okay, so how much speed reduction is there? Um, variety of data on this with heavy snow, speed reduction of up to 40 kilometers an hour. Okay, of course, it depends on the snow. This is 